Folk Volunteer and I'm coordinating the craft project as many of you know because you will have um, either been down on the foreshore with me or will have been um, heard me speak about it several times. I'm just going to talk to you today about craft overall and give a couple of examples of some of the work we've been doing and um, the importance of it and um, give you an lots of opportunities to get involved as well if you would like to. So first thing I want to start with is there is a craft quiz um, where you can win a prize as well. So that even though there isn't a raffle, we've got a craft quiz. So outside on the craft stand, you'll see there are um, forms that you can, little quiz forms you can fill in and then put them in the box and we'll announce the winner later today. So, Craft brings together COLAS, so City of London Archaeological Society, and TDP volunteers. It's looking at the causeways, river stairs, and ferry, ferry terminals on the tides, and also on the Thames, and also the jetties and ladders, but we couldn't get that in the um, <laughs> acronym, so it <laughs> would have been a bit odd. So, um, why is it important? Because obviously, as many of you will know, London was so important to Londoners every day, to the economy of the city, to how people got about, to the jobs they had. It was really, really at the heart of um, London. And it was very much the, the highway, the way people got about, the way it was just so much a part of their lives. So what we're looking at with craft is we are researching all the craft between Vauxhall and Greenwich. So, so far we have found about 200 of them. So we think there might be more, but we've definitely found about 200. And as you can see here, the craft, what was very important was there were a lot of public landing places so these are the places where people could go and they could just catch a boat because there wasn't any public transport at the time that would help you to just get about easily in London. And there was only one bridge. Imagine if there was only one bridge today trying to get across the Thames. So craft were very, very, very important in people's lives. And you can see here two of them on this uh, map from 1676 with the wherries clustering round them, which is what they would have done. They would have come up there to get the people, um, so people could just get in them and go wherever they needed to go, whether they needed to go to work, whether they needed to go to a play, um, whether they needed to go further on along the Thames, because of course there were also um, the short ferries just went across, but there were also the longer ferries that went much, much further um, down the Thames, and which usually had a bit of a cover over them just to protect people from the weather. So I've said this was part of Londoners every day. So what sort of an experience was it? You can see two very different um, points of view here. So on the one hand, you have the ideal version. So the waterman is very kindly standing waist deep in, in the water to hold the boat um, while the gentleman helps the lady into it. That's very nice. Or on the right, you have a very satirical um, version, which might have been more of the reality of the watermen who were well known for cutthroat um, competition between each other and trying to get rid of their rivals to make sure that they were the ones who got the most business. Stowe says in his 1598 survey that there were about um, 2,000 wherries between the city, Westminster and Southwark, which he says employed about 3,000 people. Now, even if those numbers are slightly exaggerated or, or, or out a little bit, um, that really shows the importance of the river as a way of actually not only getting about, but also as a means of um, livelihood with lots and lots of people being involved in that. And often families being watermen from generation to generation. So a great thing with, that we could do if someone wants to with craft is look at the genealogy of watermen, of all the families who are getting involved and tell some of those stories because what's really exciting about craft is the stories that, it, that we are discovering as we research them more and more and as we get really involved in all of this. So 
the reality might have been somewhere between these two pictures, but it gives you an, an, an understanding of even how in those times people were portraying what it was like to take a boat across the Thames. Of course, the weather would have been terrible sometimes, there would have been, um, perhaps you would have been wet, boat might have overturned, there was a lot of traffic on the Thames, so it wouldn't have been very easy. And uh, of course, the watermen were known for also perhaps trying to get a bit more money out of it than, um, than the fees that they were actually allowed to charge. So it wasn't just for taking a boat. <coughs> There's also a lot of other activities going on on the foreshore. So these are Hungerford Stairs, um, taken in about 1820, I think. There was washing, there was disposing of rubbish, there was watering of horse horses, there was mudlarking. There was a lot going on that people were actually um, doing in those times. So washerwomen, for example, there's a mention of them having a special jetty where they went out and did their, did their washing. And if you look on our board out there, you'll see um, that um, one of our wonderful craft volunteers has actually done, a, is doing a study on medieval women and uh, mentions it. Uh, disposing of rubbish, we know the butchers had a jetty where they could just throw their entrails into the Thames. So I don't know what the foreshore would have been like afterwards. And of course, one of the things um, that still uh, happens today is that sometimes craft were not accessible. So people would obstruct the lanes, shut the gates, lock the gates. There was even, in um, 1417, the city actually had to um, legislate against people who were charging for anyone who wanted to collect water or go down to the um, do their washing on the foreshore. They were charging them a penny, or even two pennies, to go and do it. So the city was saying, you know, this is a common good, this is something that everybody should have the right to do and nobody should have the right to charge for people going down onto the foreshore. So, what about the actual craft themselves? So they're not all created equal, unfortunately. So this example, many of you I'm sure will know, this is the um, York Italianate Watergate, which used to stand in front of York House, York House which was demolished in 1675. So this um, is now a minor tourist attraction in the Victoria Embankment, very far from the Thames, of course. And actually, um, if you look again on our um, stand outside, we've got some images of this watergate in the past. Underneath it, there were actually two arches which were later filled in. So um, although it looks like that now, it used to stand much higher out of the water. This one has not been so well maintained and is not a tourist attraction on the Thames. This is Trinity Almshouse Stair, which was left for a long time to disintegrate gradually over the years. Um, it used to give access to Trinity Arms House, but the um, access was blocked up, I think, after the um, significant floods that happened quite a while ago. And it has now had a makeover. I don't know quite why. Um, it's, it's very odd looking now if you, if you see it. It certainly doesn't look like that. But this is actually the brick foundation of a stair. This isn't what the stair would have looked like when it was being used. So one of the questions we're asking with craft is, well, what would the stair actually have been like? Would it have been a wooden stair on top? Would it have been stone? And in fact, the thing you discover with craft is the more you look at them, the more questions you have, and the more things you have to investigate, it's, it becomes a bit addictive. So here's Southwark Bridge, for anyone who recognises this one. Now this is a really heavy duty causeway, which we're wondering why. Why would you build such a massive causeway there? So more questions. And I don't know if you can see, but this, this bridge, which dates from the beginning of the 20th century, actually cuts into the stair. So we can see the stair is a previous phase. Now, who recognises this causeway? Older than the stairs. No, custom house. custom house, yes, this is custom house. So, those of you who know custom house stairs, it's a really monumental, imposing stair, and it has this rubbish causeway. So, <laughs> big, big question for us is, why, why have you got such an amazing stair, and then you build this little, little causeway? So this is a recent phase of the causeway. There were previous phases, so what we're really interested in is, what were the previous phases like? Were they worthy of such a really um, big and imposing stair or not. There is a previous phase that is appearing gradually to the, um, just upstream of it, with some posts and 
um, planks. So we're very excited to see that erode more. It's one situation where we want the water to er the river to erode more rather than less. This one, who knows this one? It is in Wapping. No. No. King Henry Stair. King Henry Stair, which again is another example, and and a big question that we ask ourselves: Why are some craft left to erode, or are even as this one is being taken apart because someone has removed those steps, and others are um, seemingly repaired? So this actually is a real danger for someone who someone who gets onto the foreshore. How do they get off? if all of these craft aren't being maintained. That is a really big um, issue, we feel. Now, if we get some exciting remnants of older craft, this one is under the stairs by the Mayflower pub. This is traces of a previous phase. So if you're looking at craft, you're very excited about this. And, now this one you must have seen, many of you will have seen this many, many times. Cannon Street. This, now I'm sure many of you have walked past this and not even given it a second glance. It's just a ladder, what's it matter? But this actually has a really long and exciting history. So this used to be at the end of what in the time was called Hayworth Lane. And of course, a very key thing to think about with these older craft is that because of waterfront reclamation, the earlier phases of the craft are actually inland. They're not the ones that we find on the foreshore. So this craft, I see someone's got a tail of two tunnels. We've got a tail of two craft here. This, actually, there used to be two craft. There was a common stair that everyone could use, and then there was the cloth worker's stair, which was locked off by a gate. And in fact, the cloth workers continually complained that their members were giving the key to people who were strangers, and not members of the company. So this was given to the cloth workers by William Gardiner in 1480. And it was, they, they, there was a lot of mention of this stair in the cloth workers' accounts because it was repaired, replaced. So they were continually maintaining it. Their cloth workers used it to actually go down and wash, um, wash the buckets that they used as part of their, um, part of their trade. So of course, that stair was really impacted by all of the changes that happened in London over the time. Here you can see a map where it says New Quay. That quay was actually never built. So it just goes to show you can't always trust a map. And that stair would have been obviously at the end of the lane still when it was changed to All Hallows Lane. But from this time on, we never see any reference again to the two stairs. So what happened to it? When did it disappear? Is a really key question that we're trying to find out. And you can see, of course, that for the watermen, there were so many things that threatened their livelihood. There were sedan chairs, there were coaches, there were hackney coaches, there were bridges. There was so many things that, that for them, and this poem was by um, John Taylor, who, was, who called himself the um, water poet, there were so many things that they were fighting against to keep their livelihood. And still just one bridge in London at this time. But of course, even the watermen couldn't hold back change. And we can see here, you can see on the left, All Hallows Stair beside Calvert's Brewery in 1820. Still a big wide stair with big mooring posts. Ten, 20 years later, it was a steamer pier. Now, Key question is, did the stairs still exist under the steamer pier? We don't know that. Something we've got to look in. You can see all the steamers clustering around it. This was, this was the big business, the new big business. But then, that didn't last long. It was also threatened by a new version of steam, steam trains. And here you've got Cannon Street Station. You can still see the steamer pier, and it was there certainly until the end of the century. But then, sadly, steam steam appear went and now we come to the poor ladder in very reduced circumstances it's still on the map as a causeway in the 18 in the 1950s it was still there in 1977 this is 2019 melvin was saying the causeway is probably still there under all the gravel or at least remnants of it 
but as you can see, it's gone from being a big, wide, important stair that was much used to a ladder. But you can still see where the stair was because you can see the infill and you can see two levels of heightening on it as the river wall was progressively heightened. So next time you go down to Cannon Street, do have a look at this stair or at this ladder and do have a, have a thought for it of what it used to be. So that's why the work that the craft teams do are so, is so important because if we don't record it now, it's going to be gone. And here's just one last quick example. So Ratcliffe Cross Stair in Wapping by Limehouse. 1899, really big, really, really long causeway going right out and a stair. 1999, Colas had a photo. That's all that was left of the causeway. And now you can see my photo on the right. There's nothing there anymore. The stair's been replaced by a concrete stair. And I walked right down to the foreshore and there is no sign of this really big causeway that used to be there. So, just a word about craft. So we launched in 29, January, June 2019. We've recorded close to 25 existing craft. Um, we're doing lots of, people are doing lots of research because this is, um, this is a volunteer-led project. There's opportunities to do foreshore field work. We've created our own recording sheets. We've got guides. We've got an online space where we share lots of information. And there are so many opportunities to get involved in historical research because craft touches every single aspect of London's lives that was related to the river, whether it's, gene whether it's genealogy, whether it's map progression, whether it's photos, images, panoramas, children going down to play in the foreshore, they all use the stairs and those stairs were really important to them. So my last thing I'd like to say is a huge thank you to all of the amazing craft volunteers and um, give yourselves a big round of applause. Thank you.